Caught on camera, the head of the Public Utilities Commission unleashes an angry rant at a high-profile San Diego attorney. It happened during a hearing on the shutdown of the San Onofre nuclear power plant. I'm not here to answer your goddamn questions. Now shut up. Shut up. Oh, that's kind of a bad ringtone on that one. <laughs> Very happy to be having an opportunity to talk with you today. I know it's taken me about a week to overcome the emotional stress of Mr. Peavy's outrage. But uh, anyway, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah. Well, give us the state of play of this so-called investigation at the CPUC and what your objections are to the way it's being conducted. Well, the, the purpose of the proceeding is to figure out why the executives at Southern Cal Edison deployed steam generators that were supposed to last 20 years and only lasted two, and related to that, why the ratepayers should then have to pay for the San Onofre power plant for the next 10 years, even though it's not going to be producing any electricity for them. That's really what the supposed purpose was of the investigation that was announced by the Public Utilities Commission in November of uh, 2012. And so what is the state of play currently at this date, uh, last of May 2014? Well, uh, the, there was a, a well-orchestrated plan to never have an investigation into who was responsible for uh, deploying the defective steam generators uh, there never was an honest effort to figure out whether it was reasonable to do that. Uh, and there was no effort to figure out whether or, or an, uh, an investigation into whether ratepayers should have to pay any more for the San Onofre plant. That, that we now know. So that's, that's one thing that's been established. But beyond that, uh, what has been established, there's nothing in the record that would allow the Public Utilities Commission to agree to the plan that's been put forward to end the investigation uh, based upon uh, the proposal that ratepayers pay another $3.3 .3 billion. Uh, in order to get that uh, plan that was announced, the so-called settlement agreement approved, the proponents had to show that they went through the steps of evaluating the strength of the case that ratepayers had that they shouldn't have to pay anything more for San Onofre, and there has been an admission by the president of Southern Cal Edison, the primary proponent of the settlement, that there is no nothing in the record that would allow the commission to make a judgment in favor of the settlement agreement. What was the circumstance under which President Peavy had this outburst that led to this ringtone? Mr. Peavy got peeved <laughs> and then melted down. Uh, after about 20 minutes of questioning, of the uh, president of Southern Cal Edison, uh, who then admitted that there was no real basis for the settlement. And then when we turn to what the real reasons were behind what was being proposed by Southern Cal Edison, uh, the president of Southern Cal Edison was asked, well, isn't it true that your, the value of your stock went up $160,000 on the day, a few days after the settlement was announced? The ALJ, who works for Mr. Peavy, wouldn't permit it. And then I, I said, well, you know, we have an offer of proof. We, wanted, we believe that there never was an intent to have this investigation. It was a promise of an investigation without the intent to perform. We think that the ALJ uh, put off any investigation to the indefinite future, that she prohibited us from gathering any evidence about uh, whether the deployment of steam generators was uh, reasonable or not. And then uh, there were these secret uh, discussions aimed at figuring out how not ever to have the investigation. There was an announcement of the so-called settlement that was immediately joined in by uh, the uh, PUC president, PV, and by Florio, the assigned commissioner to this uh, issue, uh, claiming that they were happy that all of the uh, parties had settled, even though there were many that, that were not going along with the settlement. Are there implications of this, the outcome of this case that go beyond San Onofre and California even? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, one of the things that we have learned uh, from Fukushima 
and what's happening uh, in Japan right now is there is a covering up of the risks associated with these nuclear power plants. And we know in, in Japan there's been this change in government, much more conservative government, much more repressive government, uh, a tyrannical uh, threat, uh, but most importantly, a controlling of the information. And only what the government wants you to know is being disclosed. And there's probably a lot of different reasons for that, but you see somewhat of the same situation here in in with San Onofre. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has proven itself to be more of a cover-up artist or more of a cover-up operation than a disclosure operation. Same is true with the Public Utilities Commission, and the public has a right to know what the safety threats are, what the financial threats are, what the game plan is for redeploying the nuclear waste. And I think that, that uh, part of what's happening here is sending out a warning signal to the other hundred or so nuclear power plant communities, the communities that are housing those plants, that you better take a look uh, at, number one, how is your nuclear waste being stored? How safe is it? What is the plan? You know, they have these burial, the, they call them the burial costs. Uh, and that's, you know, the, the costs of what they say are the nuclear waste that's going to be buried. But the question is, no one knows where anything's going to be buried. They don't even know how it's going to be buried. San Onofre would never have been on the radar screen had it not been for the failure of these steam generators. We never would have started to grapple with this because we would have just gone right ahead and, you know, not been aware of it. So the because of this accident or this failure of judgment, we're we're now in a wholly different situation. And we now are wait a second, this has been advanced. We are much more aware of, of the risks of, of, of getting rid of the nuclear waste. And all of the discussions, people like Donna Gilmore and others that are leading this effort all of the discussion that's being taken is taking place up to this point is the same people that were careless in deploying the steam generators are being just as careless in how they're going to store and, and transport and get rid of uh, the nuclear waste. And the problem with that is that that is a much more serious, it's not just about dollars and cents, but that is a personal safety issue. You know, maybe it's time to go to the community and get the groups that are really knowledgeable about uh, nuclear safety and nuclear, uh, the cost of nuclear power, and that are, that are, the, the, you know, really dil have been diligent and a well, a real dedicated record of diligence. And this is maybe it's time to put them in charge for a while, you know, and put the people that are the most concerned about the people, and not most concerned about profiteering. Maybe it's time for that, just for a change, you know, for the next few years. And and you know, even if they do, the challenge is going to be great. You know, to figure this out is going to be really great. But, you know, if you don't try to figure it out, you're not going to figure it out. And at least you have to put people in there that are going to try to figure it out. We don't have that today. I mean, it's kind of ironic. You had the, the uh, pipeline blow up in San Bruno with PG&E. You had the San Onofre meltdown uh, with Southern Cal Edison. And then you had the firestorm with San Diego Gas and Electric. And all three of those problems, the Public Utilities Commission failed the public. And people are aware of that. It's, you know, San Bruno is very aggressive about it. And people, and as they start to dig in, and the same with San Onofre, and same with San Diego with the, with the fire, as people are digging in, they're finding out, hey, this isn't just about this one episode. This is a systemic problem. And California really is unique because it does have not only the highest prices, but its utilities are going up at about double what the national average is for as far as the, the costs and, and the amount that they're allowed to charge their returns on what they call their invested capital. You may not live in uh, the Southern California area, uh, or you might, you might, but this injustice is a systemic problem. And to the extent that you can pick up the phone and just call your local legislator and say, you know, I don't like the way the Public Utilities Commission president speaks to people that go before the commission 
and cusses them out and tells them to shut up. I, we really, that's that's really you're you're tolerating something that that shouldn't really exist. That's not really the way in which we think. You are public servants. That doesn't sound like a public servant. That sounds like a a tyrannical uh, public official. And we don't want that. And we want you to do something about it. We need that fellow to move on. And we need the, the message to go out. No. Ratepayers shouldn't pay for the mistakes of Southern Cal Edison, and not only that, but you should pay the money back. And beyond that, the federal government should conduct, as Senator Boxer has asked, we need a criminal investigation of this. This is taking money from people under false pretenses. Why can't we go after people who are in positions of responsibility, who have no excuses except for their unbridled greed for doing this? Why can't we go after them? Those are the things that we need people to call up their elected officials, and, and just calmly uh, and rationally uh, get those points across. The thing people have to understand is they're supposed to, they, the public utility commissioners are supposed to be making decisions in the open so we can observe what's influencing their decisions. The decisions at the Public Utilities Commission, you know, there's a, there must be some underground bunker that they all go to and make their decisions in secret because there is no way that when you look at the public record that you can understand how they go about making their decisions. And that is a constitutional, state of California constitutional right that all Californians have to observe their public utilities commissioners making the decisions in their as a group. And that is being denied to them. The decisions are made behind closed doors in what they call ex-party meetings. Uh, the whole point about Mr. Peavy was asking him, hey, what, you know, you've been making decisions with Southern Cal Edison. Why don't you tell us how, how that worked? And that's when he said, I don't have to answer your question. I don't have to answer the question of whether I was meeting in secret with Southern California Edison, plotting how not to investigate the unreasonable conduct of Southern California Edison's executives. I don't have to answer your question about how I was able to orchestrate this whole facade of a settlement I don't have to answer your questions about uh, how much I've been involved in this whole process that you don't know about. Shut up. Just shut up. And, you know, that's the attitude that people have is the people of California from, you know, the Public Utilities Commission, colon, to the people of California, shut up. I don't have to answer your questions. And that's, right now, we don't have any politicians saying otherwise. We hope with the public hearing this and seeing this, that maybe we can get some politicians to call up the Public Utilities Commission and maybe they can ask them. Mm -hmm.